call our select board meeting for February 5th, 2020 to order. Uh, going to start with our consent agenda. We have minutes from December 4th, 2019 and December 11th, 2019. We have warrants AP2029, AP2030, AP2030S, AP2031, AP2031S, PR2015, and PR2016. We are going to award the Plainville Cemetery uh, headstone uh, rehabilitation to Gravestone Services of New England. Uh, the same uh, type of work at Old Hadley Cemetery to Gravestone Services of New England. We have a uh, marijuana RFQ, which I just want to put to the side and talk about after the consent agenda. We have Common Victualler, inspired by Opportunity, DBA Wendy's. Common Victualler, Casual Concepts, DBA Moe's. We have a PVTA matching grant, which we are going to hold right now. We have the town election warrant signing. And then we have the Hadley Police Department dispatch full time, which I'm going to let uh, Deputy Chief Bryant uh, talk about. So, may I have a motion for those items that we do have on the consent agenda? For the items remaining on yeah. the consent agenda, make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We can, we can do the uh, uh, dispatch appointment. So, um, I'm Deputy Chief Bryant of the Haley Fire Department. I'm representing the public safety um, for a new hire tonight. Um, this is Carly Hamlin. She's a resident of Chickabee, Mass, for 23 years. Carly was our final interview for potential candidates for our last vacancy for full-time dispatch. Carly impressed the interview panel with insights into concepts like work ethic, integrity, that many of us haven't heard described by people with much more interview experience. While Carly does not yet have the certifications required to step directly into the full-time dispatch role, what she does have is incredible work ethic and willingness to do whatever she can to learn and become an excellent dispatcher. Should this board accept the recommendation, Carly will train as a full-time employee and we expect that she will be able to handle the difficult job of public safety dispatching very soon. On behalf of the public safety, I'd like to recommend Carly Hamlin as our new full-time dispatcher. So moved. Uh, second. second. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then the uh, marijuana RFQ, I just wanted to set that aside because we have received two um, requests or two proposals for that one remaining license. Um, and I was wondering if we, j what we wanted to do, if we wanted to just form, it could be two of us on the select board, whatever, to just review those proposals and make a recommendation to the uh, rest of the select board or how, how we wanted to handle those RFQs right now. I so just, uh, just to bring everybody up to speed, yeah. uh, I did review both uh, applications. One was from an outfit from Arizona called um, um, Mint. Mint, and the other one is from Connecticut um, at Leaf. Um, <laughs> uh, the differences between the two organizations are microscopic at this point. Uh, they seem to have responded adequately to all of the questions that we asked in the RFQ. Uh, it does appear that Mint has a better financial position to carry their project forward, but the location that they've selected, I think we need to receive a, an opinion from the zoning enforcement officer as to whether it complies with our zoning bylaws. Where might that be? That would be at the Midas uh, uh, Center next to the Hojo's mm -hmm. and the Hampshire Ball. Mm -hmm. 
pretty close to the existing licensee. Yeah. Yeah, very close. How, how about the other one? Where's there? The other one is located inside of the Hampshire Mall. Really? It's a smaller operation. In terms of revenue to the uh, town, they're pretty much neck and neck. Uh, and uh, in terms of their responsiveness to our request for other things such as security, uh, traffic counts, uh, audits of their gross uh, finances, they both responded favorably to, to doing that. So it does seem like somebody should go through and you know, have the criteria and check off the criteria and mm -hmm. rank and... Yeah, I mean, they're both very detailed proposals. Uh, David showed them to me this afternoon and that, you know, I wasn't going to pan for you. I haven't heard seconds. of one going in the mall yet. Mm. Yeah, I, that's why I think it might take a little more time to kind of vet it and see if they, if how each one weighs. Because mm -hmm. uh, there's questions on both, but I just feel like making a decision right now without really much research, uh, we didn't know how many we'd get when we put out the RFQ and that kind of thing. So Whereabouts in the mall? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Where's the, um, sorry, just the timing? Is there time pressure to respond? To Not on our part. Um, uh, Had Leaf says that they can get their project done in two months. Um, no, that's a, that's a real the other back one's up. It's uh, on September 2020. Okay. And um, um, Mint uh, says that they can get their project done by next February. So it'll be a year. Mm -hmm. like name that too. So. I guess I would have to look at the, the rules, but isn't there some, um, I know it's been a controversy in the past of having these locations near school zones and mm -hmm. churches and things like that, and I just wonder if that's an issue with being the mall being an entertainment kind of complex for kids yes. with interstate and go-karts and things like that. Movies and yeah. arcade. So it's Something roller skating, or something like that, yeah. yeah. No, there's a little bit, of, it's I'll not so look at there, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, David so. and Christian, do you want to do that? Yeah, I can, I can, I don't mind uh, <laughs> reviewing some of that. So, I've asked for an opinion from uh, Tim for communication. <coughs> so, I think if he rules one or uh, both of them out, that causes something. Uh, and uh, I'll try to get that answer from him in the next day or so. And they would have to still go before the planning board. Right? Oh yeah. They, oh they, yeah. They need all that process. special yeah. permit. Yeah. If you if you decide at any point to say yes to the proposal, all you're doing is telling them that they're eligible. They still have to comply with all of the town requirements. We still have to negotiate a host community agreement. Can we check with the cannabis control commission to see if there is any? issue with being in a mall like that because that might be a non-start or something we're going to have to look at. Yeah, okay. yeah exactly. Okay. So I think there's kind of that initial screening we should do with Tim and then, um, you know, if it requires further review, then kind of dig into it and make a recommendation. Mm -hmm. So that sounds good. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't think we have to vote on that. We can just, uh, we can just, uh, since we don't have to make a decision, there's no yeah, Real so rush, but let's try not to let it linger too long. I guess yeah, so we can get back to them. Process, so we said that we were in the RFQ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, public oh yeah, we can do public comment real quick. Is it anyone here for public comment tonight? Fifteen minutes allocated for that. Good. All right. Can I just take this time? I think. I'd like to take my time now instead of at the end of the yeah. thing since we're going into there. I wanted to um, uh, talk about people that have passed yeah. within the past. We've had a rough beginning to this year yeah. with uh, certainly um, very nice people that have passed on, and one of them was Assistant Chief, uh, Deputy Chief Ed Dukevich. Um, I just want to put out there that uh, Chief Bank and Able did a wonderful job with his department, um, as did our police also participate in that. Um, but coming over the bridge and seeing Northampton Fire um, by Duffy's there, Tire, 
lined up to give the last salute to Ed also. I just want to put a shout out to thank you to Northampton for participating and uh, making it really a, a great send off to uh, Ed. Um, and all the past fire personnel that came out that have retired but came out to say their goodbyes to him and participate in the ceremony also. It was very touching and um, they did a really nice job. So thank you to both Chiefs and uh, especially Chief Bank and Able for giving Ed a, a great send off that he deserved. Um, that being said, we also lost a very uh, nice man. It, Kelly had passed. Um, uh, my remembrances, I, of course, I knew Kathy from working at the hospital, mm -hmm. and uh, it always amazed me how she was able to get out of the house and go and work as a nurse and take care of 12 kids. Yeah. Um, but when Ed said, yep, yeah, yeah, you got two Hadley uh, fellows up here in North Hadley, and they went to Holyoke and got two sisters, and each one married a sister. And between them, they had 20 children. So needless to say, you know, Ed's participation in, when I first went on school committee, um, his last two children were playing at Hopkins Academy, and that was Bridget and Bill. Mm -hmm. And so I got able to watch them participate in all the sports that they did, but Ed and Kathy were right there. And Ed was right there, he, I can say it now on TV, he would come in to get his injections in his knees in my office just so that he could participate and go to his grandchildren's now um, sports events. And so um, he certainly was a family man. He was a Hadley man. He participated for many years on our sewer commissioner be commission before we changed that over. So you know, our, our so very sincere condolences to their family and um, for being who they were. He is, yeah, both of them. So. Tonight. Well, thank you, Joyce. Yeah, thank you for acknowledging everyone. Um, my condolences. <coughs> um, let's just, uh, since Mark is here, let's just jump to the West Street parking item on the agenda. Uh, we just wanted to clarify an issue <coughs> of parking on the West Street Common. Uh, the select board serves as the town's highway commissioners, and any parking requirements or restrictions need to be coordinated and approved by the select board. Um, I just wanted to get the board's buy-in to send a letter to the planning board concerning any proposed parking restrictions. Basically, um, you know, Dave and I were doing a little bit of research this afternoon on, it seems like Mass General Law basically covers that the select board has purview over the streets, <coughs> parks, those kind of things. Um, and the planning board has control over zoning and everything related to that. We can't say that you can use streets as parking in their restriction of the zoning, but you know, any parking on the streets and those kind of things would be in the select board's purview. And we already discussed with you about the parking, no parking signs and those kind of things with that involved. So just wanted to make that clear and, and send a letter to the planning board regarding that. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have anything else to that. add. Yeah. It's just uh, my question is, so the <coughs> common also falls completely under the select board too as far as its usage, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. You might want to include that in the letter. Yeah. Just to be clear. Yeah. I mean, there are have been um, several families throughout the summer months and things like that that do use the common to park vehicles and I don't think we've ever said anything to them at all. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not something that's done 12 months out of the year. And having already set guidelines for you for what I think that should suffice for our cause on this side. Yeah, and I don't want to necessarily open up the floodgates. Anybody can park anywhere. But, you know, we, we had that discussion. We came to an agreement. I don't want to send and, any and mixed we messages. And we posted. So, yeah. We would just like them to park on, on the road, not on the lawn, and yeah. just go with that. You know, that's that's all that we're asking. Yeah. And I would hope that, you know, the planning board may not, not agree with the contents of the letter when yeah. they get it. But, um, I mean, I would hope that the chair would reach out to you directly and not involve... Um, people owners. who are going before the planning board uh, in the yeah if there's a ruckus. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you taking the time to discuss it. Um, it. It has been a difficult process for us, and uh, 
it's we're currently in the stall side of things because we can actually do what we want to do without them approving our site review so it's we'll see how it goes at the next meeting but I hope hopefully with your support everything will move forward and, and we'll be able to actually um, redo our building and the properties as such so we'll be able to alleviate some of the excessive parking on the common so mm -hmm. yeah. I know you're working towards making it whatever it should be you know you bought that piece of property in good faith to help you know offset what you needed to do for your business right yeah. and we appreciate what your business has brought to the town so we would like to you know assist you in that way yeah thank you. support you the best you we can it's great to have you here so um you know all right any, anything good. else regarding that or pretty, right. pretty good david will try to get that letter out this this week do yeah. you have time we can, we can we can put this together very quickly okay I know I don't have a lot of time. Are you at the planning week, board meeting in two weeks? The 18th. 18th. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Great. Did, did you want to? Oh, I was going to say, I was just going to make a motion that we send the letter as requested, just outlining what the, the um, actions we've taken on the common, and, mm -hmm. and just say that that's as far as we're, as far as we want to go at this point. And clarify jurisdictional issues. Yeah, clarify jurisdictional issues. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. <coughs> what time is it? Uh, 6:47. Uh, let's see. Trade show report. We could we could do that real quick. Who wants to start? Molly, do you want to start? Uh, sure. Um, so, great trade show as always. Um, I think the speakers this year um, they're particularly good. And. The trade show itself, in terms of the um, boy, I mean, it just seems year over year it's the same people <laughs> when you roll through the uh, trade show. With the trade show itself, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. but but it's always good mm -hmm. to, to catch up with people and have some conversations. So, um, you know, we were able to do that. Um, the breakout sessions, there were a variety of them this year, and you know, again, we kind of fanned out and and. and uh, tried to go to different ones. There were a lot of um, housing uh, and economic development were big topics of conversation this year, not surprisingly because of the governor uh, and lieutenant governor's ongoing initiative to um, point out the fact that Massachusetts is just becoming way too expensive for people to live and how that kind of um, filters out to the local level in terms of what localities can do um, relative to uh, helping bring some housing stock onto the market. So um, that was really where I focused a lot of my time and energy and also um, talking, uh, it's always a great opportunity to talk to our neighbors. So I had a lot of good conversations with Sunderland and Waitley and uh, again, the commonality of issues people are facing with infrastructure, housing, mm -hmm. affordable housing, all mm -hmm. of that. Yeah, I'll just add uh, that I thought it was a really great speech by uh, Governor Baker, just kind of uh, talking about how, you know, politics at our level is very functional, where like you get up more levels and people get more um, divided over party and over all these things and how it's nice being in this realm where everybody can kind of get along and we're focused on common issues and getting the town together and all these things and uh, I, I just thought that was a really great speech she said it much better than I did but um, that was that was really a highlight of the of the conference to me um, again just to reiterate what Molly said is the housing and economic development I went to one really great talk on that and what people are doing and in, uh, in other towns um, kind of collaborating mass works grants with um, private partnerships and towns working with developers to kind of redo infrastructure, redo project um, to, to support housing and economic development. One thing that stood out was just uh, when we're thinking about designing projects, doing a 25% design um, so that when MassWorks grants become available, it makes them more appealing uh, to get accepted if we already have some design work done, uh, can get funding more likely in that scenario. So when we're thinking about capital planning and those kind of things, if we can 
think about doing design work in our capital plans to have things in our pocket for future projects. Um, what else? What else was there? Oh, and just we had a meeting with the Western Mass delegation, and it sounds like we're going to have another um, Western Mass conference coming up. I forget when that was. Probably in the fall. October. Fall. Yeah, 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 in the fall. Um, but talking about. Secession planning. Is that Ed, um, Edwards that was going to put that? John, John Edwards. Edwards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that kind of stuff. Uh, they may even try to get uh, Richie Neal there. Yeah. yeah, they were thinking of getting Some Richie Neal there. Some people want to communicate with him directly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what he can do for us. Which right after that, there was an announcement about him talking about <laughs> East-West <laughs> Rail in the paper that I thought was I ironic. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so that was great. Uh, I don't know what else I have, but uh, there's have a lot any, to digest. Uh, I was sorry I missed it. I could not have packed my way through, though. <laughs> yeah. A day and a half, no way. Um, but did you? Were you able to get any uh, credits for MIIA? Yeah, yeah, I think we were. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah so we did some get some. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and Chris yeah, Okafor Crystal was Sarah. there, and Ed O'Connor was there before he left. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So it was great seeing them there too, and mm -hmm. and Good. being able to spend some time together. Yeah. Networking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Nice. And David, do you have any follow-ups? Yeah, so I, I missed the governor's speech on uh, because I went to a technical training on how to address unfunded, uh, not unfunded, um, yeah, unfunded liabilities such as uh, OPEB and pension. So we got some hands-on training and strategies. It turns out that uh, pension liabilities are emerging as a critical issue for many cities and towns now. I attended uh, sessions on reimagining wellness programs for better employee health. And since we have a grant for that purpose, I found that was very helpful. We went to a session on shared services among small towns and how best to use the resources of the regional <coughs> planning agencies in order to um, uh, uh, divide between two towns such, um, such uh, functions as police and public safety. Uh, there were business meetings galore with the Managers Association, the Select Board Association, Small Town Administrators of Massachusetts, and then the granddaddy of them all, the Municipal Association itself. A lot of committee work um, with the managers, uh, networking with colleagues on a variety of topics, meeting the representatives from the Western Massachusetts communities to plan for that October uh, conference and then gather resources and opportunities from vendors <coughs> and state agencies. So I found my time there very valuable. Uh, <coughs> some years I'd go there and I'm not as favorably impressed, but this year I thought it was a very good year. Yeah. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, maybe real quick, we have five minutes here, is uh, the Valley Bike Share Program, since that will be quick. Uh, basically, Valley Bike Share Committee has awarded Massachusetts uh, to establish an electric uh, bike exchange project for the region. Hadley has been invited to participate. Uh, basically, the Valley Bike Share Program would like to put these stations at the malls, not in downtown had we here, you know, town hall, uh, library, or the senior center, more in the mall area to enhance their network. Um, and we've sent a letter to Pyramid, who was the Hampshire Mall, to see if they would be interested in participating in this program. We haven't really gotten a response from them. And we have not received a response, not from, received them. A response from them. And so basically, um, we're really recommending that we, we don't sign on to this MOU right now because we just, uh, it doesn't make, we don't have any town property near the malls where they want to put the stations. Um, it would involve some town money and, and different resources that we just don't have right now. And so, um, you know, I think it would be different if we were talking about the library, the senior center, town hall, that kind of enhances our community a little bit more where at the malls, it's self-serving to that network and not really to us as a town. So um, I'm just kind of recommending uh, that 
you know, we don't sign on to this right now. I would like to keep the door open in case opportunities come up in the future, but for now, um, don't see us really wanting to do this, unfortunately. Because I would like to do it personally, but um, I just don't see it jiving with the town's goals. Yeah, I'm not in favor of it either right now, costing us money. Yeah, so. yeah. It yeah. certainly doesn't seem to make sense for a transportation perspective to stick it behind the mall where there's already, uh, you know, <coughs> plenty of action <coughs> that, but there's plenty of parking there where it could be in the center of town, maybe to get to Northampton, to do, yeah. you know, other things there. Yeah. And, and their thoughts are that, you know, it's station to station, so if they had a station near the malls, it's a place where you could take a bike from UMass, from Northampton, from Amherst to the malls, park it there, okay. and then go so that you're not getting charged as it's sitting, sitting locked up to a light post or whatever, you know? So um, that, I, I, I see it fitting into their mission. I just don't know how we do that as a town. It's more getting buy-in from the malls to do it. So, and there might be, or, you know, L.L. Bean is right there, um, EMS, Whole Foods. I mean, so many companies are there that might be interested in participating with them, but I just see the town as a middleman that's yeah. not really helping. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. a shame. Yeah. Okay. So, right. I don't know if we need to vote. Uh, do we need a vote on that? Uh, I'll make a motion that we pass over executing an MOU at the at present time. Second. Mm -hmm. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Does that get us to seven? Close enough? Close enough. Okay, so let's do our community development block grant appointment. And David, are you presenting that, or are we? No, oh, I'm sorry. Right. Yeah, through Chris Dumphy. Of Chris Dumphy. Pioneer Valley. Oh. Thank you for coming. Sorry. Thank you very much <laughs> yes. for having me this evening. I appreciate it. So my name is Christopher Dunphy. I'm a, a principal planner at the uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. I've been uh, largely administrating community development block grants there for, uh, gosh, over 20 years now. And um, we're here to present uh, a proposed application on Hadley's behalf. Mm -hmm. The grant is due on March 6th. So just a little background. Uh, the community development block grant program was started in the 70s as largely uh, to address urban issues. but. Uh, over the years, it's been expanded to, to offer opportunities to smaller towns and cities as well. So each and every year, uh, Congress will convene and uh, decide on appropriating a budget for the Community Development Block Grant Program. And uh, once that budget has been established, HUD, they're the federal agency, they distribute uh, funds to what we call entitlement cities by formula. So these entitlement cities uh, automatically get uh, CDBG funds to do different programs and services uh, you know, with the community development black grant monies. So what's kind of left over goes to the state agencies, and in this case it's the Department of Housing and Community Development. And they offer, through a competitive grant application process, smaller cities and towns to compete uh, for, for what's left over uh, through this black grant process. And that's where we, where we come in, because uh, we're actually pretty good at structuring these grant applications uh, for the smaller towns within our region, and at administering the projects if they get funded. So um, each, you know, over the years, we see the state uh, sort of tweaks the applications, and they make minor changes, which affects the competitive level of the communities uh, that you know, may want to apply. And, and for over the years, you know, uh, the way that they had structured it kind of, to a large extent, not altogether, <laughs> but left Hadley out of the process because it was just so competitive. You really have a, a really good chance of, of obtaining the funds. Uh, you, periodically, I think we've been able to attain uh, one or two here and there. Uh, when we regionalized you with other communities, which improved your scoring. Mm -hmm. So lo and behold, the regional uh, process it no longer is a benefit uh, competitively, but they made other changes that did make it more competitive to, to, for you folks. And so um, that's why I'm here, because I, I think we can have a reasonably decent chance of a, obtaining funds through this program. Um, so what we're proposing, at least for this coming year, that's what they're going to call the fiscal uh, FY, uh, the federal fiscal 2020 year, okay, 
uh, we're proposing that we continue a housing rehab program. I think it was maybe three or four years ago, uh, the, there was a program here in Hadley, and I, I remember actually visiting some of the, the residents that we were serving at that time. So we'd like to continue uh, housing rehab services to qualified residents in the town of Hadley. And at, at one thing I want to say, David, if you remember, there was a target area then. There is no longer a target area. They, they threw out the requirement of having a target area. So anyone town-wide is eligible uh, uh, for this proposed program. So um, we do have a waiting list. I looked at it today. Uh, the waiting list consists of clients that we never got to last time around, as well as some new clients that we've obtained through some recent outreach. I visited the, the Council on Aging and, and we, you know, I did a you know, presentation there and we made forms available. It's only yielded about four or five, by the way, so far. So, you know, it's out there. So if there are people that are interested in housing rehab, there are forms available uh, at the Counseling on Aging Office. I saw some here as I was entering the building and, and, and I believe there's some available in the Selectman's Office as well. It's on the website as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they're widely available and I, I would strongly encourage folks that have an interest in, in housing rehabilitation <coughs> services to fill it out and send to us because these uh, applications, as I said, they're competitive. So what uh, I'll need to do over the next few weeks leading up to the application is establish need, demand, and feasibility. So feasibility is not an issue. We've been doing this for years and we know how to manage it. We have a team in place. Uh, it's the need and demand that we're the, 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 these forms, we're calling them interest forms at this point in time, show the state, oh look, there are people lining up to, to get this, this, these services if, if they were made available. You know? And uh, what we've also done is we've kind of done a survey throughout the town, analyzing the condition of your housing stock and taking some photographs and, and demonstrating to the state that, yes, well, there are people that want it, they're in line for the services, and yes, there is demonstrated need based on the physical conditions of some of the properties that we've seen randomly. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's sort of the need and the condition. So the housing rehab program, we're proposing a modest, relatively modest program of maybe getting funding for perhaps 12 units, um, you know, based on the need and demand that we're, we're seeing right now. We think that might be a, a good start to get back into this program. Mm -hmm. uh, those that qualify, uh, qualification is based on income, and they use the, the threshold of 80% of median income. Now, uh, I'll translate that for a household of one, one person that's, again, it's low to moderate income, that's up to $49,000 or 49 and some odd change. So anyone that earns an annual of in income of that or less would qualify. And of course, for a household of two, it's a little bit higher, and for three, on, and so on and so forth. So the program, uh, if someone applies, were to apply and they get accepted, we can address uh, state sanitary building code issues. This is not a renovation program. This is not a home expansion program. This is rehabilitation. We're talking your basic building code systems, roofs, windows, siding, weatherization, electrical, plumbing, people that really need th this type of work to bring their, their homes back up into a safe, healthy, livable manner. You know, so um, it, it's a pretty popular program. Uh, we can provide up to $40,000 of assistance for those that qualify. And uh, the assistant comes in the form of deferred payment loan. And I went into some quite detail uh, with the Council on Aging. So the deferred payment loan, it, it, think of it in two aspects, okay? Um, they call this the anti-speculation and recapture plan. The anti-speculation part is we don't want to just provide this assistance so people can speculate, improve their homes and sell. You know, we want people to remain in their homes. So that's why it's a deferred payment loan over 15 years through this recapture plan. Now the recapture plan starts like if you were say to get 30,000, uh, the, 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 the lien would be filed for 30,000 and then it would go down over 15 years and then at the end of the 15 years it becomes vacated, it becomes deferred, you know, so that's the recapture part. And if, you know, it, sometimes someone does have to sell for whatever reasons, they're moving or their lifestyles are changing or whatever have you, and that money would be recaptured and made available for other people that would want to, to get into the program. 
So that's the, the anti-speculation and recapture plan. There are no payments during this 15-year period, and it's forgivable. So the, that's the essence of the, the housing rehabilitation program. The other two projects that we're presenting are planning projects. Uh, one of them is an Americans with Disabilities Act transition plan. Now, uh, there's been a, a the, the requirement of actually having a transition plan goes back to the early 1990s with the Americans with Disabilities Act. And it had been hoped when the act was presented, everyone would develop these plans and they'd have them on file. And, and it basically is a document which shows how a community will transition from uh, accessibility non-compliance into compliance, you know. And uh, you don't have one, to my understanding, that uh, meets the, the standards of, of, of the act. So by doing this, uh, analyzing the buildings, and, and it, it puts you in line for a whole other sorts of resources that might become available. Uh, for instance, the block grant program. You cannot get uh, funds through the block grant program to modify your public spaces for accessibility unless you have this transition plan. The, the uh, Massachusetts uh, Office on Disability, they annually offer a grant program to communities that have the transition plan. So um, mostly, I think a lot of your buildings are in pretty good shape, but I think there are probably areas that you're not 100% uh, right up to stuff in terms of compliance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> we think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, if funded, this plan would hire a professional consultant that would work with an appointed committee uh, and um, begin to analyze y your buildings, put it all down on paper, and, and kind of come up with a strategy of prioritization and, and, and seeing what we could do to address those deficiencies. So that's one of the planning projects. The other planning project, we've been working a little bit with uh, some of your committees here in town, and I know you've done plenty of work on this, but it involves the Russell School. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, I've had staff that have met with uh, Alan, and we've had some conversations, and we know that you've done quite a bit, but we feel now it's maybe time to take another look at it with, with other resources that may be available, with other people that might be available. Mm -hmm. So our, ourselves, we have a staff consisting of myself and a historic preservationist and other people on the PVPC staff, but we'll also bring in another professional consultant that might take a new spin at it, working with an appoint, appointed committee, Alan and, and others, and, and any other folks that you think might be appropriate to, to help steer this effort mm -hmm. and see if we can get that uh, Russell School back to reuse in the way that you want to see it reused. Yeah. So those are the two planning projects along with the housing rehabilitation program comprise what we're uh, proposing as the FY 2020 CDBG application for Hadley. All right, does anybody uh, have anything to say uh, about it or it is a hearing so I don't know if anybody from yeah, the crowd wants, to, hearing. wants to put any here. information out there or say anything well, are you this particular no. mass oh. preservation yeah. projects fund Go ahead. Yeah, yeah would 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 be something um, that you would deal with 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 uh, this committee as well is that one of the grants that you're talking about w one of the projects within the grant within the, the, grant. the grant would have three projects housing rehabilitation, the accessibility planning study, and the Russell School Reuse Fe Feasibility Study. That would be part of the grant. A reuse feasibility study. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Not necessarily uh, actual preservation no. on the building. No, we need the town to, to decide on the best use, you know, with, with, with the committee, the, the board's input, and community input. We want the community to come together and, and, and decide as a community what is the best reuse for this facility. Mm -hmm. okay, but two, two questions. Do that, Here we are, Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Alan. Two questions. Um, assuming you get the, we get the grant, we apply for it and get it, and it's a chunk of money. Is the money divided up into three separate pots that you know are basically that's it, or could you put move money from one pot to the other if <coughs> if you you know if it made sense to do that? Um, they are three distinct projects. We're presenting a budget. Uh, you know, based on those three distinct projects, housing rehabilitation budget for that, uh, the Americans with Disabilities Act 
a planning study, a budget for that, and a budget for the so feasibility that's the study. Specific budgets for the specific projects, right? Not just his. And, 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 if, and if we were able to 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 hire consultants uh, for one, that's you know one they may be hungry uh, and think that the, the town through an RFP process hires a consultant, and that consultant is able to present a, 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 a you know a contract or a budget at a good price and. It, it, we don't use it all, yeah, then we could talk about moving monies from one line item to another. But it, we're going into this, this grant with the idea of the, having set budgets for each project. My second question is, <coughs> for the Russell School Feasibility Study, that's obviously a planning document. We're looking at different things, marketing, yep. you know, you know, various things that we need to look at. Some of which we may, the subcommittee may be looking at already before the study actually gets rolling. Right. And I'm thinking that um, the most likely situation would be we'd have some recommendations of findings and try to narrow what the options are, and then this feasibility study would, would take it further, assuming we don't find somebody, some angel of having who's going to you know, take the building off our hands before that, which is unlikely. But my other question is <coughs> could the grant application be structured to get money that would be available not just for planning but for stabilizing the building? Not at this point in time. Uh, maybe, you know, once we're operational through this process and we've been able to fulfill what we, the goals and objectives of the planning study yep. and we find that there's funds available, well maybe we could pitch something to the state, but a lot of it is predicated on what the reuse is, you know, right. uh, you know, so if we determine right away in the planning study that the reuse is going to be for, for, for the primary benefit of low to moderate income persons, then the answer I would say would be yes. But if the use is like to, to build something that's real fancy and it's not really to the benefit of low to moderate income persons, I would say the answer would be no. If that kind of answers your question a little bit, yeah. yeah. And I just have two questions. What would so the applications do March sixth, and when is the uh, award date? So we don't know. You know, because it, it's a competitive application. They're, they're being submitted from all over the state. Uh, it's really predicated on the team at the DHCD reviewing them, and then whatever politics get get involved with you know, different inputs from at different levels of the state government over there. But typically we usually find out uh, what communities receive the award by July and, and contracts will begin disseminating at that point in time. So it's a possibility by say September, we can actually begin to launch activities. Okay, that would be about the time frame. And then, you know, some of this stuff I just, um, you know, get grants to do certain things or get certain assistance, but we don't, we're just tied with staff here and committees. And so, yeah, would there be a point person that would kind of be managing these projects? And so we're, we're, we're writing it on the premise that we're going to be managing it soup to nuts, you know, <coughs> with input from whoever you point to work with us. And there's a line mm -hmm. item in there. For right. Here. Yeah. So we get paid uh, through the administration portion of the grant to, to manage it on your behalf. Okay. So we, we'd assist with the procurement documents, we, 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 you know, everything, but we're doing it on your behalf based on your direction. Yeah. Okay. So we, we don't want it, so it's a, it's a community grant, but we have the capacity and the ability to, to manage mo most things, you know, with input from received from this board. The board of selectmen, uh, specifically the, the chairman of the board of selectmen, is the uh, executive officer that will be responsible for signing the grant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, so we, we're very skilled at uh, preparing uh, uh, RFPs, mm -hmm. uh, doing the procurement. I'm a Massachusetts uh, uh, certified public purchasing official. I imagine you, you have a David's the one as well for the community you folks are. So I would work with them and we, we put together, you know, yeah. the proposals and then, you know, the only thing I would ask is there a committee, you know, you appoint a committee, I would say maybe <coughs> on the Russell project, uh, you already have Yeah, one. we already have one there. Yeah. So that's so maybe yeah. that committee could also be used for the, for the other project. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, along with your building inspector would be... For the know, housing re rehabilitation, do you, you have need a, a committee? 
I'm sorry? For housing re rehabilitation? No, that, 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 that's we have a complete staff process. that just yeah. runs that. We, we do the income qualification, oh. we prepare the contracts. Uh, I will say uh, there will be some work on the part of your accountant and yeah. your treasurer to move funds along to, mm -hmm. uh, as, as, we, as the grant gets underway. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do we need to take a vote tonight to accept this or because it's a hearing do we have to wait? Take it up I had a proposed motion mm -hmm. uh, that was on the forms. It's in your attached to the hearing. Yeah. On the one we call the job. Oh, 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 at the bottom there. Proposed motion. Oops. <coughs> Oh, and uh, one other thing, if we do make a motion it's voted, uh, would, it, would it help to get any kind of letter of support from uh, like, I was gonna like Joe ask. Comerford and Dan Carey, kind of our representatives, to um, endorse this? We usually notify them along the way when okay. the, uh, things are under review, and they'll do whatever that they do. You know? Yeah, yeah, just yeah, so yeah. it's on their radar. We'll, we'll let them yeah, know. Yeah. Typically, we let all the area reps know what applications we have submitted. Um, when you do talk about uh, support letters, though, mm -hmm. I guess I would ask, in, in, with your uh, blessing, to, to approach the building inspector, the Council on Aging, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, you know, different entities. You know, I could actually put a draft letters for them yeah. in support of the different activities. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have an ADA coordinator? David. Uh, that's you? Okay. okay. So a letter from David, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a letter from the Council on Aging, letter we, from the building inspector. Yeah, these we have sort of letters. Municipal Building Committee. Yeah. We have the Russell yeah. School. Uh, yeah. what, what's it called? Russell School Committee. <laughs> what it's called. Okay. It's your committee. I know. I'm trying to. Uh, what's yeah, the, the exact Russell thing? Subcommittee. Russell School Subcommittee. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna make it the Russell School Reuse Feasibility. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's basically what it is. Yeah. So, so uh, these letters that I'll be asking um, uh, lend into the feasibility aspect. Uh, there, there's people in place, it's supported, and the, and the whole thing. Who are we competing against? Uh, everyone across the state, uh, you know, uh, there's probably, probably going to be 40 to 50 applications mm -hmm. submitted uh, based on my past experience. And of the 40 or 50, maybe 30 will be funded. I'll make a motion. I'll, I'll read this. That, that's what you That'd want. be great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Make a motion that we authorize uh, PVPC to prepare and submit on behalf of the Town of Hadley the proposed FY20 Community Development Fund Grant application to the Massachusetts Department of Housing and Community Development. Uh, application will be in an approximate amount of $532,000, not to exceed $800,000 as detailed in the public hearing. Projects are to include a housing rehabilitation program and two planning projects the Russell School Reuse Feasibility Study, and an Americans with Disabilities Transition Plan. Uh, further authorize the Chair of the Select Board to sign all required forms, documents, and authorizations pertaining to the proposed FY20 Hadley Community Development Fund Grant application. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 You read that quite nicely. I know it's wordy. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. I appreciate your time. Uh, there, so will there will be a few forms uh, okay. in advance of the application that you'll need to sign. Yeah. Uh, so it's a, mostly a digital application. There's just one very important cover sheet that has to be signed and, and sent by mail, and they actually have to receive it by that Mar March 6th date. Okay. But most everything else is all online. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. Thank you very well, much. Thank Chris, you very for much for having yeah. me tonight. Thank you. And uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good day. Thanks. Good night. Thank you. Uh, oh, and uh, sorry. No, you. Please get those uh, housing <laughs> rehabilitation interest forms into us. Uh, great. If there's any questions, Christopher Dunphy, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, four one three seven eight one six zero four five. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right, let's do the uh, Municipal Building Committee Russell School Subcommittee. That's the name. <laughs> you guys wanted to discuss so your work. I apologize, I'm fighting a head cold, so I'm just going to read my notes. Oh, yeah. Because I can't otherwise think straight. 
so Dan, Dan's here. Um, as you as you may know, I chair Claire Carlson. That's the chair of the subcommittee. Has to, had to step back from her committee work due to personal reasons, and I was asked to fill in as acting chair, which I've been doing. Right now, we're in the information gathering stage. We've had three meetings and have scheduled several more meetings over the next three months. We've met with, um, and we have uh, Dan Regish has attended all our meetings from NBC, and also Stacy Cooley from the Historical Commission is also attending. Uh, we've met with a PV, PVPC preservation planner who's given us some ideas and examples of historic building reuse. We hope to meet soon with developers and others who've had experience in reusing former school buildings. We're reviewing the existing documents and reports, which have been done for the Russell School, of which there are several. We're also trying to get a handle on the short-term stabilization measures on the building that are either underway or planned. Our understanding of our marching orders from the Select Board, Town Administrator, and Municipal Building Committee is to come up with possible options for reuse or disposition of the building, to solicit public input and ideas, to periodically update the Select Board, and to have something ready before May Town meeting. Um, the Municipal Building Committee people have met, we met with would like to make sure that we look at possible public-private partnerships and to look at the cost benefits of various options. We have set, <coughs> excuse me, we've set out a couple of objectives and tasks that we're going to try to accomplish by May. The first thing is to put together an options matrix which would describe various possible reuse disposition or disposition options and for each option a description of the associated pros and cons, advantages and disadvantages to the town, likely costs, opportunities and obstacles including legal regulatory requirements and possible funding grants that it might be available. The second thing is to solicit public input and ideas. We're leaning right now towards putting together a mailed survey to town residents in March or April and we're, and we're working on that. We hope to have a summary of, uh, of the findings, options, issues to present at town meeting and at the pre-town meeting forum. Uh, we'll continue to reach out to town officials, town boards, and anybody else to get their thoughts, advice, and reality checks. And we'll be working with uh, Chris, and I think we used to be, he or Lori Tanner from the commission will be meeting with us on our next meeting, which is the 13th of February, to go into more detail about how that, that particular CDBG grant will work. And that's it. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you for continuing to carry that ball forward, you know. I, <coughs> You know, it's a big task, so thank you. It's fun. Get better. Yeah. Do you want to say anything? I just wanted to add, um, I, I think that the, the committee is a good idea to have a more focused committee to look at the, the future of this building. Um, I, I would say that I have some concerns about forming a committee and, and you know, paying too much attention to maybe what will happen to this building beyond this particular board generation this is a piece of history that you know and in, in the recent past we've been uh, neglect you know we've neglected this building and is deferred maintenance and this is this is our generation's fault um, and I, I do not want to deprive a future generation of Hadley people of the opportunity to, to do it right. Um, I, I, I feel, uh, you know, bad that we lost the Russell School. Um, it, I'm sorry, the Hooker School. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, the, um, the right building for us at the time and we needed to make upgrades. We're tight for space and we're forced to put two buildings on a very tight space. Um, the contiguous land that, that connects the center of town once it's lost, it's gone forever, and our, our kids, our grandkids, do not have that to, to, to use. You know, they, they may be able to enjoy it and <coughs> look at it from the outside, but they won't. <clears throat> if I were to sit on this board 10 years, 15 years from now, I would like to be sitting on this board in that building. And, I, you know, I, I, I may be among very few, I may be among very many, but we don't know because nobody has put this on town floor to find out what the people really think. And I, I fear that unless the people vote one way or the other, um, many things will happen. And, you know, that, you know, it, and a big oops, um, 
if, if people don't vote, um, you know, to, to dispose of the building, it, it will be held, you know, for, for another generation for people to enjoy. And, you know, we've seen by the latest election, people are saying, well, townspeople are sick of paying, uh, you know, paying, they're, they're sick of their taxes going up. And so all of the stuff that we needed wasn't voted for. And I, you know, I've talked to several people already that said, well, if I knew that that was on the line, I would have voted. And it, you know, we had some pretty uh, bad things happen in town, and I'd, I'd hate to see this building, you know, disposed of, demolished, or sold. And uh, again, I'm only one of probably many people who think that. Um, I'm, I'm glad that the committee's together working on it. I will try my best to, you know, you know, preserve the building. I know that there is a grant available that is uh, not related to the block grant. It is uh, a, uh, let me call it up here. Is that preservation fund? Mass, Mass Preservation Projects Fund. Yeah, I went to that meeting, by the way. Okay. And I don't know if we want to, I can talk about it now, but. Uh, it, the deadline is March 20th, and yeah. there is another workshop yet available. So, I mean, there's plenty of time to get money to stabilize the building. Yeah. And that has, <laughs> this has nothing to do with future right. use of the building. Just save it so that it, whether we own it or not, you know, at least we, we, can, we can save it. Um, it's deteriorating rapidly now. And these are funds that are available, and we have the opportunity now to, to gather the grant information and submit it. We have the numbers. We have the updated numbers. Larry Tuttle has provided us with updated numbers for a bunch of the projects that need to be done there. And it's just a matter of assembling a team and, <coughs> you know, Fill in a, it's a PDF, you fill them in, and you go around and get the live signatures. If I could suggest that maybe you and I could sit down with, uh, with, with David, David or, or and you know. could I can report back on what I brought back from that workshop that I attended yesterday okay. down in Holyoke. And I've got the documents and the application forms and everything else, but there's a lot of hoops to jump through. Sure. And, uh, you know, I'd love it if we could do it. I'm, Right now, I don't feel terribly optimistic about whether we can do the things that need to be done before March 20th, but we can talk about it. Other, you know, it, again, the library has been terrific about capturing grants to preserve their building. And if you ask them to chase this grant, they would do it and they would get it done. Um, you know, we, the Municipal Building Committee would have to ask for their help to get such a grant done, but it can be done. And it can, can be done for that building. If it's not done for that building, at least do it for the Goodwin. But I think that's where that grant money should go. And it's it's possible. And it, it, and you know, is it is a lot of hoops? Yes, there are. Um, and I think that you know the town shouldn't be passing these up because oh, it's, it's March 20th. There's yeah. still a workshop available. If there's a workshop available, then there's time to submit the grant. You, David, do you have, uh, I was just going to ask if you have time to meet with them and possibly fill out this grant or sure. work on it a little bit? Yeah, we've, we've done historic preservation grants in the past, so it's a valuable, valuable uh, um, uh, grant uh, uh, opportunity. It is a lot of work. Okay. Um, so I'm happy to meet with you and put that together. And, and by uh, the way, it's a matching if, grant. If you have um, <laughs> information from uh, yep. Larry Tuttle, I would very much like to see that uh, because that will guide our sure. thinking. Sure. So they're going to meet with him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, you talked about putting it on town meeting floor or, or in front of the voters as far as making a decision. Um, would your committee be able to come up with some, and I'm thinking like five or six different scenarios of how the building could be used? something along those lines so that way um, we could put it on a non-binding ballot question um, that way we can get it some actual feedback we did that for North Alley Hall well, I'm, I'm thinking the survey would you know, if we get a survey out on this out <coughs> before the town meeting that would help it inform us I think I mean I don't know I mean, town meetings obviously another uh, you know or a vote or something like that but I think if we have to we have to bring people up to speed on what the real options are and what the pros and cons are. Well, and I think we I, also have to have, we have to monetize it because yeah. it's one thing for people to say, oh, you know, it could be a mixed use or it could be 
low to moderate residential. At what cost? What's it going to cost? Right. I mean, I've, yeah. it's all going to well, keep coming back. Well, two to questions: that. what it's going to cost, and what's going to cost the town? Because it's going to cost something, but it may not be the town who has to, has right. to pay for it. Right. So right. that makes it a different yeah. proposition. I, I was I was going to ask too, just out of what you're saying here, is I I don't like the idea of taking it to a, a vote because I feel like it's kind of like an uninformed decision, and it's more like from the heart, tear it down, keep yep. it, and without a lot of background information. So I was going to say. Can you guys strategize about a way to kind of roll it out? Yeah. You know, that might be appetizing to people. So, like, what little crumbs can we leave at these various meetings that might build to the point where we ultimately have a vote? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, I don't know if we could, well, we, where, where, where this process is going to be and, and how you can envision it and then how it can ultimately come to a vote if that's two years out, if that's a year out. But maybe at Springtown meeting, we can have just, a little something that shows where you're at and kind of build some excitement about it but not really when like we built the it Hadley vote. elementary school we had three different scenarios <laughs> of what type of school to put there yeah and we gave the residents of the town the opportunity to put their input into um, saying what they would like to see there as an elementary school and I think if you put that out there in your survey and ask the questions of what how would you want to repurpose exactly these that building are you doing Goodwin too or you're just doing Russell? No, just Russell. Just Russell. What would you like to see Russell yeah. be? Or here's some here's some yeah. possibilities. Well, here's some scenarios about? that we can right. give you. Yeah, yeah. Or I'm even right. thinking like when downtown Northampton when they when faces left and they had all the things on yeah. the wall, just like people put ideas up there. Some of them were ridiculous and obscene, yeah. others were good ideas. <laughs> so you know, people could do maybe there's something like that that's like a community activity that we could have at the Springtown meeting that kind of is just building towards something bigger. I don't know. Just mm -hmm. kind of thinking about how to do this yeah, we'll, without we'll be, we'll killing be, the project before these it These are the kinds of things we'll be kicking around for the next couple of months. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And as, I mean, I, I think there are two different things. Yeah. And, and I think that, you know, my, my biggest concern is, is immediate attention right. to what needs to be done. Yeah. So that's why I mentioned that grant. It is available. And I know we have no money in this town for that kind of thing. And the town has no appetite mm -hmm. to, to put money into something that they don't you know that they, they they put money into the things that they thought were important the fire station the senior center the library they you know they thought for sure these are the things that are really important and we'll think we're not going to sweat for a few years i don't know what people are thinking but i know that that building would deteriorate rapidly if we don't do something and say it. if you you might not be making a decision on how we're going to reuse this if you don't fix it now yeah, that's a good point and it, yeah. it, it, mm -hmm. it's so important to to take some action and and you know we we voted to mothball mm -hmm. that building so that it, it would become you know not such a liability for town and we want to make sure that we can preserve it well let's let's stay on that track and make sure we can save it um, I, I just think it's that important for the future of, of town residents, the future of taxpayers. You know, the, the, the guy who pays to the CPA committee and wants that money to go to the right place. Yeah. Yeah. Do, can we get the updated numbers from Larry Tuttle? We haven't, maybe they just haven't gotten to us yet, but yeah. I know. But I'll look at the I, I, I gave. Uh, yeah, we, I saw that spreadsheet and we're still trying to figure out how to ma match it up with yeah. the DRA. Report. Yeah, you sort of have to match it with the DRA. Oh, really? We don't um, have to. The, he. he updated everything yeah okay, everything that the dr and vra well, talked about fixing the, everything the inside the building yeah, you know, there's a lot of numbers there and it is real control. confusing and and if but, we got together yeah. with david but, but, but for short term shift stabilization just about the really the building is not mothballed it's vacant it's not mothballed it, it's it's not tight so there's roof work there's foundation work there's drainage work those are the three areas if you solve those that building could stand 100 years and never and vacant okay and it would still be there if we don't do those things mm -hmm. then it might it might not be salvageable in, a, in two years and all this work that we're doing to, about reuse might be just out the window yeah so and and the NBC's put forward some you know proposals I think they have the, some roof work they've been talking about fixing the porches you know and and we could do that short term we'd have to go to the CPA to get the money and that's a, you know not a guarantee Especially if they don't know exactly what we're going to do with the building and whether we're throwing. We money have a lot of ifs that. out there right now, yeah. so, so we need yeah. to get something but, a little bit more positive. But if we can narrow it down to the specific, some specifics about what we want to do or, or should be doing, then maybe we can get sink our teeth into that. Maybe convince 
some people that it's worth doing. And that, and by the way, this preservation fund, you know, requires a match. The only logical match is CPA, CPA. money. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But the CPA money. One of the things is, is the CPA money's got to be in hand, and, and of course CPA money can't be authorized unless until town meeting does. Town meeting is not so about May fifth, seventh. That's yeah. after the, the the date. Now they told us if, if your town meeting is afterwards, you could, and you have a warrant article, they'll give you the grace period of 21 days to uh, you know if they if they approve the grant, then you've got 21 days to show them you got the CPA money. But all this stuff has to roll out like in the next two weeks. Okay. Okay. We, we we got that, okay. and I think that you we'll guys should get together with David. Yeah. CPA articles are due February 18th, so there is still time. Yeah. If you guys can meet with David before then, maybe we could put something in with CPA. Maybe there could be this grant application. I don't know. Let's yeah. let's end it with meeting with David and kind of yeah, going around, from there. I think that's I'm a good idea. all the time for the next two weeks. I'm around all the time for the next two weeks. Okay. All right. Well, thank you both. Thank you for coming. Thank you, thank you for the update. I, I'm excited about it. I know it's a lot of work and scariness but it's passion. great so right. thank you yeah <laughs> yeah making my ears ring <laughs> <laughs> thank you all right well, thank, thank you. you let's just uh jump to uh sewer rates and i don't know where we want to begin chris i don't know if you want to kind of kick things off with where we're at and i was just basically thinking of covering the bullet points you sent yes. and then kind of looking at the, the the forecast model of kind of where sewer is at as well you know i don't know if you want to kind of present it a little bit i i don't mind kind of going through it too whatever you what, what do you what, prefer that's what i would like to kind of been through it already. that's what i would like to discuss with the chairman okay the bullet, the bullet points and also yeah. to to add that uh, if it's feasible for the board uh to Make arrangement in either two or one members of the board before they I can spend time to go through just like as you stop by on Friday. Yeah. yeah. That probably that may also help in this and then also if they can or the board can also tell us where we are in terms of the numbers we are using. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, with free cash and that kind of thing. Yes. Did we get free cash certified? It was yeah. maybe going to happen by the end of today, but no. It's um, not happened yet. I just checked the email. <laughs> okay. Uh, we did have a conversation with the Department of Revenue today. They said nothing wrong with our submission. They have to get approval from some higher ups. Okay. So it should be happening yeah. very shortly. Yeah. <laughs> Any day now. Um, yeah. It's pretty pathetic. So the um, sewer. Reserves appear to be coming in at about three hundred and sixty-two thousand dollars, which is actually better than it performed last year. So that's that's a ray of sunshine. Okay. And this okay. this we can take this to the bank, or this is just this is an estimate. Estimate. Okay. So do you want to run through those bullet points, Chris, or you you you? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just, uh, I, was, I just some suggestions on some couple of bullet points for concerning sewer. Our view is that uh, for the FY19. <coughs> We had a deficit of 40,000. The FY20 stayed the same. We could not still have, um, we, we, we believe we could still have uh, decreasing revenue because of, uh, in part, the number they just gave us that tend to be a good number. But we were working with the 270, at least uh, 270,000 as a number based on, in part because we have no actual uh, number yet because of the free cash mm -hmm. event. I think is that every year service and cost tend to go up. Uh, one of the major costs for us is uh, 
<coughs> mandated liability from the collective bargaining agreements. We have to meet every requirement there. Also, even even with the annual call out of two percent or the other that the board give us, we also have um, various pump stations. The pump stations and the, the, the plant itself is not the only issue. But most of our pump stations, we have these air, all these air engines and parts. Um, age has come to them, and whenever we have one or two down, it's usually a big number, five, ten thousand dollars to get an engine. But we're very grateful that some of the repairs, our staff can do them. But uh, we also, at various times, bring in vendors to. So, so those are the uh, our problems. We also, we also, if you look at the model, the model reflects very little in capital. We try not, because of where we are in sewer, we have, we've not been able to do major capital. We have some linings to do. Uh, the good thing is that because we do annual uh, investigation of our pipes, uh, um, so we have few areas where we have to line up. Uh, one of the major capital that is on our docket is the Route 9 pro um, project. And that would cost us um, some capital expenditure. And so looking at the reserves uh, and looking at these projects, we are very reluctant to, on, the, on, the, on our budget, put, put in some money to do more of uh, repairs. We have, we can easily put in repairs capital repairs of anywhere from 150 to 200,000, especially with the pipes that we have to put in some sleeves or repairs. So, and because we don't have to dig them out, but we have to go in, it's also, not a, you have to not get a particular vendor who, can, who does this kind of event. We, we the, the other thing that uh, is, um, I talked about labor, we also have both water and sewer infrastructures, which is one of the things that I just mentioned. But we also have um, our reserve amount. There's no exact way for us to look at the next five years and come before the board and say, yes, based on our formula, we have the projections. The usage is high because, which is a positive thing, we have businesses coming in, but the we also cannot tell this, the board that um, uh, we are ready if, for example, there's uh, a failure in one of in, in the plant. The plant is aged, so not every vendor has uh, equipment. So that also takes us behind. Um, when we were, when DEP and EPA came in last year to look at the plant, one of the things that we told them was that the board at that time was also looking at our rates to be able to get us in a better place. So at this point, we haven't gotten to that point. Now, before my time as the chairman, the, 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 the town went through this structure, which Tyre and Bond gave, gave, gave us a good structure at that time. And it was, they were playing with 15% and thinking that if the town could go a couple of years down, we may be able to sustain our reason. But events has overtaken that. And also before the last time meeting ended, we also came before the board. We have we had a couple of options that the board was looking at. I I would still recommend Mr Chairman that um, based on where we are and based on this uh, format that Ty and Bond has put in for the town, I want to recommend fifteen percent but I would recommend that if the board can take a look at our debt structure, it put into taxation. That will help us to at least uh, be almost even. And then the board can also look at how can we increase um, rates for maybe smaller numbers for the next couple of years. That would be, and so when we have some of these big projects <coughs> that I just an, analyzed, we can come before the board, either we put it on the taxation or put it on both taxation and also whatever we have in our 
reason. Mm -hmm. So this way, the the red line will not be there anymore for some time. Another thing that I also like the board to take a look at, Mr. Chairman, is the issue of the way we bill the billing. Right now, we go almost quarterly, three months. I don't know if it's something the board can take a look. It might be easier for us if we can go monthly. This way, the whatever, whatever increase or whatever decision the board finally takes, uh, it will not be coming as a big number to our customers. It might be, you know, where somebody has to pay ten dollars right away. Maybe be, they may be paying one dollar, two dollars, some. So it, it, many communities have done this. It's easier to, but provided the board uh, is able to give us a long-term approach on this, I think we will be able to come out of this and also be able to, in the next cycle of the CBA um, quality bargain agreement, my, I will also strongly suggest that the board should take a look at our current contract. Now, I know that it is not easy to take, take away anything that the board has given, but I suspect that sometime probably there may be some other things that the union can give to us back. Mm -hmm. or the issue of which I've come before the board many times to a, take a look at the, the structure in terms of personnel. Mm -hmm. So those are, the, those are areas where I think we can also save money. Okay. Chris, can I just try to kind of distill what you just said? Sure. I just want to make sure I heard it right. So you're here tonight not proposing a multifaceted long-term solution that we would vote on saying Here, okay here's the panacea if we do all of these things we've solved our problems sounds to me that what you're asking for is a um, some assistance in buying time so that make making some decisions that will give us time to kind of figure out what that ultimate long-term solution is going to be because some of what we've been talking about I mean the potentially pretty significant changes that would have to happen and they're not yes. going to happen tomorrow or the next day no. it could be a couple of years down the road for us to yes that was I was asking the board if the board can um, help us even if it means taking our debt and putting it to taxation this way because with that is one of the things that today uh, I would recommend that the board raised 15, 30, 40 percent raise increase. And that would not solve our problem. But if, if we can take out the debt based on what we have right now, and we think that uh, that will put us into a, or bring us to what I call um, zero level. And then from that point, the board also we add <coughs> instead of for example instead of fifteen twenty percent the board may also give us a rate of seven five percent but keep it at least for five years to build up the reserve now that we have so so that this way uh, once that is done within that five year period we we'll have a couple of capital projects like the route now is coming we also have a couple of uh, lines to do I would like the to put it on taxation because the reserve is still very fragile. It's not based based on my recommendation and if the board decides to go this route. Now, any other route that I we think the board would like to go, uh, in my view, based on our discussion we've discussed in the past, will require a huge rate increase. Mm -hmm. And also will require uh, a long term in that so, but without the taxation. And I think because of the uniqueness of sewer to the town economy, I believe that if, it, if the board decides to go <laughs> to taxation, uh, I'm sure we'll be able to, uh, we'll be able to, in my view, uh, defend that. Or and Chris, you're ta I just want to make sure, so I'm looking at the spreadsheet that yes. has its got expenses and Correct. then um, CIP debt Yes. And second. So we're talking about one hundred and sixty-five, hundred seventy thousand dollars dollars 170000 right, per Correct. year. That's what. Yes. So when this topic came up before, I know that um, there was a, a little bit of a powwow with um, the town treasurer, too, about this because of the 
the debt? Mm -hmm. Was there any argument? Like, well, was there any argument to the contrary that it would help the sewer department? Not not the merits of. I know people have strong just, viewpoints on yeah, either side. Just speaking mathematically in the short term, transferring the sewer debt to the tax rate would absolutely help out. It would uh, take about $130,000 of annual debt payment out of the <coughs> budget uh, and take a lot of pressure off the sewer rate. In the long term, mathematically, just talking about numbers here, um, it's very likely that with the Route 9 project that we're going to have to go for an SRF loan. Uh, which is typically paid out of the sewer rates. Um, if we have spoken to the people and sold them on a sewer rate uh, debt project, and then we have switched that over to the tax rate, it may be a hard pill to swallow uh, to add more debt onto the sewer uh, because the voters may think, well, you said sewer before you made it taxes, <coughs> why should I accept that? But is that why this is being proposed as a short term, like do it for So you want to put it on years? real estate taxes? Is this what I'm understanding? Well, one, one argument for the doing that is mm -hmm. it becomes yeah, deductible who's, who's on the taxes. Yeah, but who's going to pay what? Is it real estate? Uh, Whereas water and sewer are not uh, tax. deductible. Real estate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I mean that the thing is is like just to put it right on the tax rate we I know we don't have that kind of money for capital that's what we ran into this year with the generator and you know all those things I mean the only place we could pay it out of is free cash something like that but then that's that would be a pretty big chunk of free cash you, as well so you have the legal right <coughs> whether it's advisable or not but you have the legal right to transfer this over to debt exclusion so it would go on the tax rate. But it would have to be voted on. No. 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 It's something that you can do. <coughs> Realistically, with the uh, Route 9 reconstruction, that's going to come out of taxation to some degree anyways, because there's no way we can pay for however many millions of dollars it's going to be. Yeah, so yeah. there, there's just no possible way to do it. We could raise rates 200% and we still wouldn't be able to cover even a portion of it. Mm -hmm. um, and you could make the argument that the business district, commercial district, benefits all of us with the tax rates. So I can I can see selling that to the to the voters as a reasonable uh, solution there. Um, as far as the debt service goes, uh, you know, as a I would be for transferring, you know, doing it a year at a time, basically saying, hey, we'll cover this year buy us a little bit of time to see what we can come up with for down the line, something along those lines. But I don't know that I'd want to transfer the entire however many years of payments we have. Was it like 10 more years no, of payments? About 10 to 20. Yeah. yeah. So. But, but to that point, if we were able to take two years, that would be basically a $260,000 injection of cash. Oh, yeah. And, but I just would want to do it a year at a time, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, hey, I'm just saying, if we were point. able to do two years, that's 260. That still doesn't get us out of the red. Mm -hmm. But it's better than nothing. Yeah. And Chris, if we just did the one year, what's the... I, I mean, obviously, we all want a long-term yes. solution, and this yes. isn't it. But if we just did vote the one year at a time, yes. does that hamstring you in some other way or is that at least helpful? It will still hamstring us because except if the board because for example even with the two years the board will still have to establish a rate increase. Now yeah. the one year is uh, the rate increase will be smaller and uh, as we our recommendation will be for the board to give us at least three to five years and now we have to build the reserve and pay it some other debt. The two years would be good enough plus rate increase. Now, I am not here tonight to be able to recommend to the board what that rate increase would be, but there will be some rate increase. And yeah, and just on that note, yes. this is not our rate hearing, so yes. we're not necessarily so, so, deciding so on rates. With, no, we're just talking, talking about, about it. Yeah. With, well, but with that one year, it would be better than nothing. Yeah. Right. But as the chair uh, talked about, the two years will be better, or if the board wants to go, 
year by year to see where we are in terms of that, that's also a, a good solution for us. Our, our fear is that um, even with the even with the Route 9 project, we come before the board and we ask for the board to put it on taxation. We, we, we want to see whatever we can do to minimize the borrowing because eventually it's going to come to, to that. So, but this, this structure in place where the board helps us, I think it will make it, will make it more feasible and, and better in terms of long-term projection. Well, I'm certainly for having a, a, a meeting devoted to just this, whether it's a posted select board meeting or with as many members as want to uh, attend or, or not, or whether we have Ty and Bond there, Chris, and, and probably David and the treasurer as yeah. well, mm -hmm. and just devote it to just talking about solutions because we, we came up with three of them last year, and all of them, I think, except for moving some money around, got pulled off the warrant by town meeting time, so we, in effect, did not yeah, much. Yeah. yeah. And I think the um, the collector's office too, from the standpoint of right. you know when Sue was here last time, again we talked about the possibility of creating another category and perhaps only going up on that one category, and then right. she brings to the table the actual this is how many properties you're talking about right. and the dollars you're talking about. <laughs> right. Right. So it's helpful to have that available. Yeah. As well. Yeah. But I think a meeting just to talk about that so we're not rushed with other agenda items and. And can spend the time to actually hash hash this out. Yeah, and I don't actually personally. I don't think it's fair to put taxation onto people that don't have sewer. Um, I pay well over three hundred dollars to have my tank pumped, and I do it every two years or every year, depending. Yeah, no, I do too. Years. But um, you know, so I I don't feel like I should bear the burden. Of the sewer department, but, I, but, but I the think argument is the commercial district yeah. 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 because of the that bulk of the it. sewer revenue, right? Yeah, yeah. is coming from commercial. And if we didn't have the reason that we all have a thirteen dot whatever we have tax rate is because well, of that commercial district. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that that's the the other argument that we're all benefiting from it. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to have to pay for. A residential section of town when I'm a septic user and not a sewer user, but right. I can say because I'm not benefiting from that in any way other than maybe attracting residents to live there and pay taxes as well. But mm -hmm. uh, with the commercial district, I can make the argument that you know, I'm getting something out of that. Yeah, yeah it's kind of an investment the hotels, in the, the meals. Right. right, right. Think about how much money we're getting that we didn't get before just from those two. Oh, I, I agree with the same tax rate. I'm just saying not putting the burden for people that don't have. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman, I, kinda, I like to, I, I know that's why it's a little bit. This is a whole new discussion on, I mean, could take all night with this. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, and, and what I wanted to get out of this was, what is our path moving forward? Uh, you know, um, if we want to do a rate increase, I know that clock is ticking for, I think we missed the, this reading coming up. Yes. Um, so it wouldn't really be, I don't. I honestly don't know. So. No, just saying, yeah, 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 yeah. It probably was yesterday, but um, when it was, it, it, we have a little bit of time, but not a lot of time if we want to do a rate increase. We can strategize. I think a meeting that's more focused on this is a great idea. Yeah. I talked to Chris about that as well, and you know, just figuring out the logistics of that was the hard part of how we do all that. But I, I'm into doing it. Uh, so yeah, I guess what I'm looking for is collectively what kind of direction do we want to take mm -hmm. I was thinking we could have a rate hearing next meeting which is on the 19th to try to just get a little something going um, but I think we also need a strategy for the longer term what we want to do you need to bring in the collector and the assessors in this because right. they play a critical role in setting the tax rate and exactly. yeah but do we do we want to have that the powwow <coughs> session before yeah. We have it. We can. I mean, I, th I think we kind of have to. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm afraid it's just going to be. I think it gets us more buy-in if we do it, if we have a cohesive plan together, mm -hmm. as opposed to just doing a rate increase because we think it's a good idea right now. You yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah, and I think you know schedule schedule a meeting, and if everybody can't be there, they can't be there. But at least right. enough people got in the room together that. Maybe we can start aligning. 
What time of day is a good time of day to have a meeting like that, David? If we want the assessor, the treasurer, the collector, DPW, does the assessor there. really have to be there though for, for this part of it? I, I mean, obviously, if we we're going to say, hey, we're going to move this to taxation, then yeah, we have to figure that out. But mm -hmm. as far as I'm just thinking of along the lines of, you know, I guess moving money in other ways other than just increasing the yeah. Rate. yeah, 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 yeah. So. But I think, I think with advanced warning, something like late afternoon or. Yeah, I was going to suggest 10 o'clock in the morning, something like that. That's not exactly late afternoon. That's late afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> time to get up. <laughs> I was going to say 10 o'clock in the morning. That's you were going to say 10 in the morning. I've already been up for five hours, so yeah. Yeah, but I think that the department is so pretty Department heads. Yeah. Select board's not going to be available. Right. Yeah. So a late, um, would a late afternoon meeting work, David? Sure. Okay. Do we want to pick a date? Do you want to be here? Do you guys want to try to? We could propose a date. Yeah. I mean, it seems like late oh, afternoon, I'm, but I'm, I'm I know you're gone schedules. for a little while. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm gone next week, but yeah. so, but I have no. I'm, I'm good as long as people talk about it. We can we can figure it out tomorrow or the next day. Between, okay. Between all of us talking, you want to do your little survey things or whatever they're called. That I will snow a survey monkey. Yeah. We can work on some dates. Okay. And send it out. Yeah, that sounds okay. perfect. Great. Okay. Let's stop there. Is it Jim? Yes. Uh, in this meeting of yeah. brainstorming, do you? Want me to bring in tie and bond, or we just we we'll bring in other other um, entities? So I, do you I think if Sharon what, is what there we, for well, now, well, we have, that might be because good. Because what we have now is good enough, in my view. Yeah. Because if we bring tie and bond, that's also money. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm more. I I don't know what their value would be for this discussion. At I that moment, I don't think it would be of any value. Yeah. But yeah. Maybe after the meeting, after this meeting, and the board may want to talk to them and I think then at least <coughs> we have some because I think Sharon's got a pretty good yeah. comfort level on yes. that spreadsheet Correct. so with that we can at least okay. propose ideas and kind of plug them in and I think that would be good yes. mm -hmm. yeah so okay mm -hmm. all right good thanks for reminding us Rome is burning <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I guess we could we could do senior center library and fire substation real quick, and then do the warrant. <laughs> Want to do it that way? Sure. All right. So I think the fire substation and the senior center both have a lot of uh, change orders to list through. I thought the fire station wasn't doing things. Just gonna say, library doesn't have any change orders. Yeah. What's going on? We got money to change orders. So what the hell? <laughs> If we're going to upgrade and make it so that we don't have to go back in 10 years and replace things, then why not? <laughs> hey, that's how we're looking at it. We've got the steel structure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I see layer after layer after, after layer, layer going, going on. Yeah. There's a new layer going on. I think. <laughs> that's the water. It's like an onion. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Making it tight. We approved all, all the change orders. Do, uh, do you want to go through these, Joyce? Sure. Or want me to? You want to go? You want to go first? Sure. Um, basically, I don't know if anybody's driven by it or not, but uh, these are, we have the roof, uh, what, what's been completed is the uh, recent activity has completed the window install, completed the roofing underlying and trim work, started the standing seam metal roof install, started the siding uh, installation, started the mechanical electrical plumbing and fire protection rough in. So we have partial a red roof on nice. one part of it and then the bottom part of the building is also going to be red so you know the boards um, on there so we're getting there um, so inside we're just roughing it at this point with electrical and uh, kind of a shell in there you can see through it it looks big right now until the walls get up one month look ahead is continue the roofing system install continue the siding Install, complete the MEP FP rough in, and start installation and drywall install. So, in all, um, after said and done, I'll go through the order changes. But <coughs> the t contingency uh, with bid savings was 682. Uh, contingency balance with approved and pending changes is 589. 
455. And I don't know if you had seen some of your, your changes. Um, there's an ad hoc committee plaque that uh, we said yes to. Um, that was for 1,351. Do you want me to say the numbers? Or does it need to? Choice. E yes. Yes. Okay. So PCO 16 is $1,351.62 for the uh, ad hoc building committee dedication plaque. Uh, PCO 15, $1,569.61. Uh, 61 it's a countertop material change in the kitchen. Um, this is the cost to furnish and install a solid surface countertop at the kitchen cabinetry in lieu of plastic laminate uh, that is owned in the bid docks. So it's an upgrade so that it reduces like the laminate, but at least it will uh, serve the purpose and last longer than laminate would. Um, so the countertop was specified as plastic laminate as a cost savings, but now the project has a uh, large bid savings. It makes sense to to make countertops a more durable surface. And this will match the solid surface window sills. We have a PCO 14, $1,951.26, not to exceed uh, change wall surface to FRP at storage bin room. Uh, this is the cost to furnish and install FRP board at the storage room off of the apparatus bay in lieu of a painted drywall surface. Um, so we don't have to keep repainting that area. The reasoning for this change is to have a more durable surface in this room knowing that it will be experience, uh, exposure to water. Uh, PCO 17, $3,087.31, uh, $3, not to exceed, and this is an additional interior and exterior signage. This is the cost to furnish and install additional interior and exterior signage, you know, like road, ward, road signs, uh, and then on the inside of the interior doors um, to know where you're at. Um, PCO uh, 11, $1,175. Attic stock overhead door panels. This is the cost to furnish two additional overhead door panels that Cadley can store and use in the event the installed ones are damaged. Um, PCO 18 is $2,975.22. <clears throat> Framing detail at fascia. This is the cost to frame the fascia box out at the gable sides as is regular to properly close off that condition. This is required framing was not detailed in the, art um, in the architectural drawings to begin with. Um, you can actually probably see that on um, this side of the building here, when it comes down like this, it jetties out so that they're putting in a box there so that it, it goes flush. Um, so they didn't realize that when it was coming down and into box <coughs> right there at that point. So it just makes for better lines there. <coughs> PC 22, $2,342.46, not to exceed additional electrical outlets at dispatch um, desk. Uh, this is the cost to wire additional power and data outlets at the dispatch room. The need for these additional power and data outlets are being discovered now uh, because during design it was not understood what was going to be purchased for a dispatch desk and console system. And that console system that they're putting in is um, almost identical to what they put in at Center Station not too long ago. Um, PCR, PCO 19R1, $1,567.17 rerouting of vent pipe. This is the cost to reroute three installed vent pipes with apparatus space so that they're concealed above the ceiling and not exposed in the space as they're currently routed. So it's just adding to the vent, not actually having to redo it, but to add to it um, to make it go up. So moved. Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Uh, Sorry. Um, 
And uh, all, uh, any further discussion on those changes? So your 589 that you have left, that's including these changes? Yes. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Just a quick question. Will there be a backup dispatch there? Are they planning on doing that now? Not at this time. Not at this time. Not okay. At this time. Just so they won't, for... but they'll have everything ready to go, but exactly. it won't be fully functional. If something should happen, well, they'll, they are going to have everything in there. They will. They will. It's just not staffed. Just not staffed. That's right what now. I mean. They right. could, if something happens to the center station, Correct. they can move up there and Correct. have operations. Absolutely. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Yes. Do they have a generator up there? Yes. <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> With a long extension card in here. Yes, there is. Um, and then Senior Center, uh, Jane, do you want to give an update for the building? And I can I read the PCOs. All right, so the building is yeah. coming along really well. They've finished up all of the inspections for wire and fire prevention, which now permits them to finish insulation and sheet rocking. So that's going along, and they have a huge crew in there. I mean, day to day, the difference is amazing. And I encourage any of you to wander over there and look at it. I, I mean, the board. I don't mean the town in general. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're going to um, do paint samples for us next week. And we're moving right along. The tile has been done in the bathroom. The, the walls tile, the floor tiles haven't been done yet. And they're working diligently in the mechanical room, getting the hot water heaters and the furnaces and everything lined up. Ready and to go. The drywall has only got like a week left or something, right? Before I know. It's all and hung. It's, it's a whole crazy. building. Yes. Yeah. But they really are doing a nice job. Yeah. Still on track okay. for April, May. Uh, so we're on track for May first. Uh, thank you. And we would like to ask the select board to set our grand opening ribbon cutting ceremony for May 14th, which is a Thursday. Okay. That will give us time to get used to the building before we have visitors. What time would that be? Well, I think that, in a sense, depends upon who's coming and what's available. So I'm going to take this date of May 14th, and I'm going to invite the governor. Yes. OK. And then I will let you know when I hear back from his office. OK. OK. Thank you. And, yes. and then I have updated the earlier list we used for the groundbreaking ceremony. Mm -hmm. And I'm still working on it, but I will get you that in a few days. OK. Well, we can. Do you have a design again that you want to use for invitations that are sent out? No. But we could work on that. OK. Great. And then Sorry. one question that came up at the meeting today, since Chris is right here, was the ditches behind the senior center, just if you want to clean them at all before they're done with construction. Just so putting that on your radar. I don't know if there's anything there. So what there. happens is the area on the east side of the building mm -hmm. is a conservation area that everybody sort of closed their eyes to at the moment. Mm -hmm. But if you want to get those ditches clean before everything's done, it's probably a really good time. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. And then I have three PCOs. PCO 035R1, so a call for aid system. And this is a call for aid system that goes in the bathrooms, and it's to switch from a hardwired system to a wireless system in order to make the install at the toilet partitions appropriate. You just have to yell. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, so what this is, I know originally we, they were going to do hardwire, but we, because it's a senior center, want a handicap pull in every stall, not just the handicap. So that involves a lot more, which is what's reflected here. And they pointed out doing it as a wireless system is really much cleaner than running wires down thin metal partitions. And that's, I, I don't know if I said it's $4,123.69. Then we have PCO 38, which is three dedication plaques. This is the cost of, oh, it's $3,822.61. The cost to furnish and install the three bronze dedication plaques, and then PCO 37 hot water pumps for $692.15. And this is because it was just discovered that the furnished and installed hot water pumps are not meant for potable water, and this is the cost to replace the provided domestic hot water pumps with pumps that are meant for potable water. 
Not that people are planning on drinking out of the hot water, but you never can tell. Yeah, so, so it's a safety issue. Was that a improper bid by the <clears throat> by the plumbing contractor? I don't know who, where it came from, but the fact that um, I mean, I would not normally think of worrying about a hot water heater, have worrying about people drinking what's coming out of it. But in the days of litigation. It was recommended that we do this. And so, and just to <coughs> work the remaining contingency that we have on the project is $382,160.69 out of the original $419,800 contingency. And that too is including what you just said? That's including what we said. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And last but not least, the yep. library. Uh, library, again, progress is fairly visual right now, so mm -hmm. uh, I think everybody's getting their daily rake and reports on it. Um, there was one issue that came up that had to do with um, water pressure. Chris, I don't know if you actually yes. could speak to that a little bit. Yes. We, it, it impasse again, so mm -hmm. we, um, we plan to go back on the 24th. Mm -hmm. We hope that the, the, that period of time, it may pass. Um, I think, I think it is that if it doesn't pass, then we'll be uh, writing to the board and letting the board know officially. But the, the OPM has promised us that they will do all they could to make sure the pressure and also the because that is very needed. The fire the fire chief is also putting pressure that that should be yeah. done also. So we So there's a water pressure in the sprinkler system, the fire yes. suppression system. Yes. Yeah. And it's somewhere between the main and the building. Yes. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. So that's the snag that came up. Okay. Fairly recently, um, but other than that, nothing uh, to report. Again, everything's moving along. They're obviously wrapping the the steel structure right now, so you can see. We'll go back. Yeah. Yep. And uh, target date still um, late summer in terms of an opening. Great. Cars is too. June, July. Mm -hmm. Any anything else on the buildings? Good. Moving along. All right. So we've got the fiscal year 2021 budgets and May 7th, 2020 annual town meeting warrant. And um, so budgets are flowing in. I've been getting lots of emails uh, today. Um, so I will uh, tighten up the budget and um, chase down those departments that I haven't heard from yet. And. Um, uh, with respect to the town meeting warrant, I've been, able, I've been receiving requests for articles today, so I would ask that the board close the warrant. I'll uh, take the language and I'll tighten things up, check the numbers, and come up with another draft of the warrant. This was a preliminary preview uh, warrant, but if uh, you could close that warrant, I can get it off to the planning board, the CPA committee, Planning, Capital Planning Committee and Finance Committee for them to start working. Make a motion and close the warrant. Second. Any further discussion on the warrant? Closing it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Warrant is closed. Anything else needed on the warrant right now? No. Kind of just running races. with that. Off to the races. One thing I did want to uh, talk to the board about was just our review of the budget. Um, we we're going to kind of put it in the finance committee's hands. Finance committee has given us a schedule of when they are reviewing the different um, budget series and I was just wondering if it would be good to kind of have a couple of check-ins with them. I was thinking after they do the 200 series check-in on March 12th 
And then again, after they do the five and 600 series and 300 series on March 31st, so that we could, if we see any problems after those series, we can have some time to address them and meet with those departments if we want to. Mm -hmm. Or if there are specific departments or series we want to schedule beforehand. But I was thinking at least to get that check in with them, with the mm -hmm. finance committee, would be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Okay. So we'll, we'll do that. Try to squeeze those into meetings. That's, that's all I had there, unless somebody has anything else regarding the budget. Nope. Uh, last on our normal agenda here, I think, is the FEMA risk mapping assessment and planning Middle Connecticut watershed discovery process. process. Um, you said the planning board's going through this now? Planning board is <coughs> going through this, but you may want to take a look. What they're doing is they're changing both the hydrology uh, models as well as the contour models for flooding in the town of Hadley. So previously, they're on 20-foot contours, now they're down to two-foot contours, and they're using a different hydraulic model for flooding on the river. Uh, dramatically so expanded the floodplain. Yeah, basically, Hadley got a lot wetter, and people are going to have to uh, pay more for flood insurance. they so got to go buy a canoe. <laughs> Gotta buy a canoe. Buy a canoe. Mm -hmm. So um, but this has already been done, though, or they're in the process of doing it. Or? They're in the process of doing it. We have a comment period until the 18th. So if you look at the maps and you say, "I've never seen flooding in this area," uh, and that's some of the comments that we provided them during the discovery meetings, um, that would be good if you could take your copy and just mark it up, and we could get it off to the engineers uh, by. The now this PDF that was included doesn't have any maps yeah. in it. The appendices are fine. It, this was, that's what I didn't go get because this was the discovery report, so right. it had um, a kind of a list of the process, but I didn't see well, any the appendices substance the there. Okay. Yep. And I saw a lot about what they were going to do, but I didn't see anything specific to Hadley in there. That's what I was. Right. I mean, it has that one kind of regional map. Yeah, which was tough to get much of. Homes of us. This sounds good. This is the right one. And I didn't know if this was going to be more. That this was kind of an indication of more to come, or. I know that there was attachments uh, to this report, which I didn't post because they're mostly commentary from the discovery. Uh, okay. It was also a huge file. Yeah. Uh, but when you say take a look at it, I mean, I'm looking at what page is this? Um, it's like eight. Figure three discovery map, Middle Connecticut watershed prioritization overview. And it's hard to get any granularity to even. You know, I mean, I can see like a yellow <laughs> line running through, but it's not. Right. Bill you know Dwyer I mean? says it's a huge download, and he will send you all the link. Okay. Thank or you, if Bill. you could just get the map, the map of Hadley or something mm -hmm. like that, not maybe because it sounds like you know there's a lot of areas. So. Mm -hmm. So I'm just hitting the um, the zoom button here. <laughs> Yeah, I, I tried that, but it still it, doesn't. It still doesn't. Yeah, I mean, you can't even really pick out streets yeah. or, yeah. Yeah. you know. The resolution isn't that good. So I say we take uh, Squire Dwyer up on his own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so do we, let's just, is there any immediacy <laughs> on this one? Can we? Uh, well, comment periods. When's the common period over? The 18th. The February 18th. Oh, which is the day Make before our Tuesday. next meeting. Okay. Yeah. But the planning board is, is working on this project. They've been working on it since January. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so 
maybe we can email um, if we can get the map we can individually email comments to David and mm -hmm. he can kind of compile them Sounds for good. now so this just to be clear, the, the comment period is just for the select board to them or is this a public comment period like the, the federal government typically does for policy making items is, is this where residents can comment or just us? just us okay Uh, town administrator report. David, anything that we uh, missed in there we should know about? Let's see. What, what did I have to say? Uh, I'll just, I know the hour is late, so I'll go through pretty quickly. Okay. So the Goodwin Memorial Library, the old uh, building, we're uh, preparing an application for a CPA funding to um, upgrade the electrical system and ceiling in order to start moving some of the departments that we have here over to their make use of that building. Town Hall Pillars, uh, that those bid documents have been prepared and there was a uh, delay in getting the prevailing wages, but we should be ready to send that project out for bid. Uh, same with the Russell School roof repair for $8,000. I've been, uh, I'm asking the department heads to move forward with a number of capital projects that have been hanging around for a while, so those uh, projects will be moving forward. Um, we just did the marijuana MVP. Um, moving that forward, and there's going to be a listening session uh, soon, and Chris and I met uh, with the engineers to talk about using the money for the MVP program for uh, the dike. So as soon as those uh, deadlines come up, we'll be jumping on a block grant. We talked about DLTA. We're waiting to hear from them. Um, but, uh, let the, the Senate has redone the uh, conservation land uh, um, uh, special act of legislation for um, the preserving land on the Holyoke Range, and we will uh, bring that to your attention at your next meeting. David, just going back to the MVP, that um, meeting of interested parties to get together to talk about the structures along the... Yeah. I haven't organized anything on that. Okay. But it's still on your to-do list, right? It's on my list of things to do. Okay. Okay, just running through. Mm -hmm. We've touched on a lot of this. Um, yeah, so everything else is moving forward, and uh, we've talked on a lot of these topics tonight already. Bay Road Bridge, you think it's going to go 2016? 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, they should be off to going on that project. Uh, they'll be closing it down one lane at a time. There'll be no weight restriction on the bridge this time because they've already repaired the bridge for weight issues. So um, this 2026 20, that you put in here is not really going to happen? Were they offered to defer the project until? I haven't heard them uh, say anything meaningful about deferring it. Okay. This was just a well, they had maybe I'll they, be retired by then. <laughs> they had expressed willingness to defer the project <coughs> until 2026. Um, they have uh, not made that statement for a while now. Okay. So, did, did we get anywhere with um, Senator Con Comerford's office asking for help in getting that deferment for one project or the other? Yes. So uh, they're. We've talked to her a number of times about uh, the impact upon 
east-west traffic if we, those two projects, the Bay Road Bridge and the Route 9 widening, happened at the same time, and so they are allies with us. Great. Okay. Um, that is all of our regular meeting. We were going to have an executive session. I don't know if someone would like to make a motion for the executive before, session. Before we do oh, that, we oh, oh, there is one more thing. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, thank you, David. Okay. One more thing. So what was that one thing that just <laughs> came in? Um, the, I got it here, too, if you want. Oh, it's the, uh, the agreement uh, with uh, the KP Law about the uh, projects, David, that you're working on with Amherst and the water and the sewer. KP Law uh, represents both towns and so they're potentially in conflict of interest uh, dealing with the negotiations about our intermunicipal agreement. Uh, in the past, we've signed a waiver allowing them to work for both towns on single projects. We did that in the case of the guest moratorium. And so they have submitted a, a waiver for this particular project. And if you're agreeable, we should sign it and get it off so we can get the <coughs> project moving forward. Yeah, make a motion to approve the uh, waiver for the water and sewer uh, MOU mm -hmm. review. Second. All those in favor? <laughs> uh, Jennifer, did you have a comment? No? No, I'm okay. waiting for you when oh, you stop. All those in favor. Okay. okay, all those in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you, David, for remembering. Right. So I'll make a motion then that we go into tonight. Can you just There's more? Just, it's, it's just a reminder that we still need uh, submissions for the oh. Fred Oakley and the dedication of the annual report to be submitted yes. to info at hadleyma.org. And when is that due? As soon as possible would be great. Okay. And then annual reports, and I'm looking at you, sir. I know. Yeah, are yeah, due yeah. on <laughs> February 14th. If boards and committees could please so, submit yeah, their yeah, annual yeah. reports so to so info at hadleyma.org. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Any other announcements that we missed? No, but I kind of like to have us yeah. take into consideration the annual town report, at least partially, <laughs> that we've had so many people and volunteers over the years that we don't ever actually dedicate the book to. And I, I was thinking about this year um, dedicating it to the townspeople of Hadley. Um, and I don't know how else we would word it, but for our employees also. I mean, because I think so many of everybody gets missed on what they do and what they volunteer. and. Um, I just think it would be nice that we would honor them mm -hmm. because the town is what is made up of our people. So the Hadley Rocks Award? Mm -hmm. uh, Hadley <laughs> Rocks Award, yeah. <laughs> so maybe something along those lines. Something to consider anyway. Okay, yeah. Like it. Any other announcements before I jump into this? Go for it. <laughs> I was trying, trying to wrap it up. All right, <laughs> wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. Now I would like to make a motion that we go into executive session um, per provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 38, Section 21A8, to consider applicants for employment or appointment by a preliminary screening committee if the chair declares that an open meeting will have a detrimental in, uh, effect in obtaining qualified applicants, provided, however, that this clause shall not apply to any meeting, including meetings of a preliminary screening committee, to consider and interview applicants who have passed a prior preliminary screening and this is for the town administrator position. So moved. Uh, a yes, second. You, you, yeah. you seconded it, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, as chair of Hadley Select Board, I state that the board has moved and seconded to enter into executive session, and that I state that discussing the matter in open session will have an adverse effect on the town of Hadley. We will not reconvene in open session. Roll call vote, please. Phil? Yes. Kagan? Yep. Stanley? Yes. Chung Yes. Thank you. Good Have night. a good night. Good night.